It's Ramsey Dewey. I'm over here at the Animal MMA Gym with Kyle and Yuen. And Yuen was begging me to make a top 10 neck cranks video. I was going to do a, a boring guard passing video, but he convinced me to neck crank him, and I, I can't say no to that. So, my favorite neck crank of all, the grobbit. Very first thing, I'm going to get a collar tie. I'm going to break his posture at the hip. I could choke him here with a guillotine, but why do that when we could break his neck instead? Okay, so how does that work? First of all, break the posture. I'm hinging him at the hip right here. I'm taking my fist and I'm punching him sideways. So his, his, the top of his head is right under my armpit. I'm gonna grab his shoulder. I'm gonna get a figure four right here. And I'm gonna start cranking the same way we would for an Americana or a Kimura or a wrist lock or any of these other figure four type of submissions like that. Aikido. So break the posture down, punch this through, grab the shoulder, crank. The grovet. You can do it standing. You can do it in the guard. Maybe uh, we get a takedown, put him on the floor. Let's uh, pass his guard with the boring guard pass. I'm not going to explain to you that we worked on in class today. I'm going to advance him out. I'm going to punch him. I'm going to, this is all just extra information. I'm just bullying Kyle here a little bit. And I'm going to roll to his back and then move into this position. What is that? It's the twister. So you might notice I'm pulling with an S grip right on his temple. Uh, some people will do this on the jaw with much, much lower results. The lever is the forehead right here, the highest, most distal point. Maybe we're in like in a guard position and I jump over here and I'm going to do that twister roll, right? And now we got this neck and spinal crank right there, the twister. I got a whole video, actually like three or four of them detailing how to do that. So I'm not going to bore you with the details right now, but it's a great neck crank and I love it. The rear face lock. You probably remember when Khabib fought Conor McGregor and instead of doing a rear naked choke like that, Conor was tucking his chin and Khabib brought the face over here and did one of these. Okay. Is that a choke? Were you being choked? No. No. What was happening? It was a neck crank. So if he doesn't tap here, what's happening is the neck's going to break. The body mechanics of every neck crank, it's very simple. We're going to break the posture via torsion. That means we're going to make him look sideways. And now we're going to apply pressure on the top of the head this way. So you ever see those movies where they, uh, they walk up behind the guy, like a, a ninja comes up and he goes like, and then the guy just magically dies. That's not how neck cranks actually work. So the way a, a real neck crank would work is I have to make him look sideways. I've got to bend the neck in a different direction than the rest of the spine. And now I've got to apply forward pressure this way. So there's pressure on the chin moving this way, pressure on the top of the head moving this way. Okay, that's the, those are the mechanics behind a neck crank. Here, let's go from the guard. And I'm going to loop this around here. And I'm going to grab this. And well, we're just going to crank him right there. And if he's not tapping out, we can move over this way. And be as annoying as possible. So what's happening there? Essentially, this is a different type of neck crank where instead of torsion, we're just bending his head down, 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 down into his chest farther than it's naturally supposed to go. This is called top 10 neck cranks, right? How many have we done? 10, right? There's more though. There's got to be more. Oh, Kyle, come on over here. This, this neck crank is not intended as a finish. It's a frame to hold him in place. So I'm going to essentially make a frame with my shoulder on his chin, and I'm going to move this way a little bit. Now, he's, he's not going to tap to this. What this is going to do is hold him in side control. So if I'm right here, here, Kyle, escape, do what you want. Now, he can regard. He's got a bunch of space. He can move into me. If I force his chin that way, Kyle can no longer move into me. Go ahead. As long as I maintain that position on his chin, I'm going to maintain side control. 
Did you see the the newest Mortal Kombat movie? No. It wasn't great. It had its moments, but there was a scene. There was an MMA fight, and uh, they did a neck crank. I actually used. The guy locks up a crucifix and rolls over. Boom! Here, okay. Now we can neck crank a couple of ways. In the movie, they did it by pulling there, and that's uh, that's possible, okay. But we can be even more annoying. And, in, and we could set up a triangle choke, but here we're going to do a neck crank there, okay, with the legs. Have you ever wondered how many submissions you can lock up at the same time? Well, wonder no longer. Let's find out. So I find a crucifix is a great position to start setting up a bunch of crazy submissions. Let's start by locking up a, uh, what do we call this, a triangle, okay, but maybe... Maybe Yuan brings his leg up here, or I bring it for him. And so I lock him up in a triangle. So I'm cranking his neck. I'm choking him. I'm getting him in a toe hold. And let's, um, let's arm bar him at the same time. Wait, wait, we can maybe get a knee bar too. Hold on, hold on. So I don't know if I'm knee barring him, but uh, let's see. It's certainly annoying. He's going to tap to something eventually. If you actually pull that off in a, in a uh, MMA fight, let me know. Send me the video and uh, you'll be my new personal hero. Now, speaking of triangles, have you ever tried to choke someone and afterwards they were like, that was more of a neck crank, bro. Here's how to make it more of a neck crank on purpose. So Kyle's in my triangle. I'm going to move his chin sideways and I'm going to pull his head down. Definitely more of a neck crank. So one more time how that works. We're attempting a triangle. Maybe he's posturing up to keep this space open, right? So I move that head down here, pull it down, lift this up. So we turn it into a uh, more of a neck crank, bro. Now you've officially learned how to be uh, the most annoying guy on the mat and how to get disqualified from jujitsu tournaments. Let's uh, set up our Oma Plata. I don't care how you set it up, but get a close up on his face right here. I'm going to wrap these over here. I'm going to drive this shoulder down into the floor. I, I could, you know, work to finish it. And maybe, maybe he starts posturing up. This is a solid defense against an omoplata. Okay, I can whip this back down, but his face is still starting to come up. So I'm starting to work into the choco plata, but I'm not flush clean under the neck. So instead, I turn this into a face crank. I just thought of another neck crank. I know it's, it's the next day and I'm at another gym, but I thought of another one. This one's important. We're going to put the knee on the chin and we're going to turn the head sideways. I'm going to S grip at the top of the head and I'm going to pull the head down. Now, I'm being very careful here because of course I don't want to injure my training partner, but I want the knee right on the chin. I don't know if you can see this. If they have the gi, you can pull onto that very tightly. This is a neck crank. It's not IBJJF legal. You will get disqualified. But it is a neck crank. That's what the video is about. I'm going to S-grip right here. I'm going to pull down here and push up there until I get enough torsion to get the tap. Okay? Now, I don't want to do this too much for my partner, but she's going to do it to me. Fiona, have you ever done this before? No. All right, cool. Where are you about to? So very first thing, you're going to bring this knee up right under my chin and push my chin to the side. Now, you're going to S-grip at the top of the head, right there on the temple. She's going to S-grip on the top. Yep. So what's happening there? Turning the head sideways, pushing the head down, forces a neck crank. You're doing it on the other side. Okay. Just make me look to the left. Here we go. It's another neck crank. Don't do that in a tournament. Wherever there's a neck, there's a way to crank it. Thank you for the recommendation. Thanks for being part of the experience. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train. Do you like the rash guards and shorts that I wear in my YouTube videos? Well, get your own at xmarshall.com and don't forget to use my code RAMSEY10 for 10% off your entire purchase. Over the years, I've been offered a lot of sponsorship opportunities on YouTube and I've turned most of them down, except for xmarshall.com for a very specific reason. It is a brand that I use. It's a brand that I trust. They make quality gear. 
I don't want to sell you crap that takes your attention away from getting out there and training. X Marshall is a brand that supports athletes and has from the very beginning. So if you're going to get training gear anyway, it might as well be the good stuff.